I just want to um, say a little bit about myself, just just for some of y'all might not know, you know, I'm married and I have four children. I have nine grandchildren, uh, four goats, four chickens, four rabbits, and a dog. <laughs> I, 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 oh, correction, we had a bunch of goats, just, uh, we got nine goats now, um, just a couple of days ago. First, um, introduce yourself with your name. Well, <laughs> Tony. Everything else, I'm Carl Conaway. All right, and um, all right. Um, I don't, I don't walk in the spirit of pastor or, or as a teacher, get the teaching or, or any of them. I, where my, I thrive in is, is in helps. You know, I, uh, I thrive when I get to help people in any way, Amen. you know, and I'm standing here not as a teacher or, or a preacher, but as, under the spirit of helps. There's a need, and I want to fulfill it, you know, and that's, and that's, and that's what I desire, that the need be filled, you know, and if I have the ability or not, the Holy Spirit will help me, you know. Um, I, I, I don't come to church because to to get a message i never i never come to church anymore to get a message never do i do i do come to church though to see what I, where i can help you know and what what needs to be fulfilled you know to serve you know i look to serve you know um uh, and that, that's a, and that leads me into what I was going to say, you know, something about the work of the church. But I want to share an experience that I had oh, a couple years ago. Um, I was in my prayer time, you know, and as I am, you know, and I have good prayer times and I have not so good prayer times, you know. This was kind of a mediocre prayer time, you know. I was in my front room, you know, and I was just... I uh, happened, happened to be standing at that moment, you know, and and um, what had happened was I had my eyes closed and instantaneously I found myself outside of all creation. And, and this is indescribable, but I'm going to try. You know, if you don't mind, I'll read it because I don't want to mess it up too bad. <laughs> I was standing in one day and I was caught up in the outer part of creation and you just know, you know, when this thing's happening, you just know uh, where, you at, where you are. And uh, on the, I was on the right side of God the Father himself, looking on his entire creation. Now when I say outside of all creation, I don't mean this planet, I mean beyond that, okay? It looked to me like it was a sphere of various lights, you know, it just a, a whole sphere of lights. Uh, and I knew it, what I was looking at um, is all well packed together, you know, and, and uh, as I looked onto this with great amazement, without ever looking at God the Father, I didn't, I didn't turn my head and look, and I'm getting to that. I said, how could you see me in there? At that point, I found myself back in the front room, and I thought, with, with great conviction, you know, um, and it wasn't it wasn't condemnation at all. Uh, I said, "How selfish I am! Here I am, worried about me. If God sees me, and I could have looked at God." <sighs> thinking I missed it. But that's what he wanted. He wanted, he wanted to show me something. I'm, th I'm thinking to myself when I could be looking at the left and see more of an awesome sight. God the Father, my Heavenly Father. Um, then the Holy Spirit it said to me, this is how the world is. It wasn't just directed to me. This well, God's there for us. He is, he is there for us, but yet we go, go about our business and we don't pay attention. You know, I mean, still, you know, we hear, we try to pay attention now, but in our daily routine, 
Um, and that's and that's kind of where I'm, I'm going with this. Um, we have uh, I have some some scriptures and stuff. I want to just um, it, it, it's almost going to be kind of backwards, you know. I'm going to tell you the answer before I tell you the question. <laughs> uh, Jeopardy. <Yeah. laughs> um, in Matthew, uh, I'm sorry, Mark 12:28. I want to read there. Uh, now one of the experts in the law came and heard them debating. He saw Jesus and answered them well. He asked them, answered them well. He asked them, which commandment is the most important of all? Jesus answered, this is most important. Listen, Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, with all your strength. The second, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The expert in the law said to him, That is true. Teacher, you are right to say, He is one and there is no one else besides him and to love him with all your heart all your mind with all your strength and with all your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices then Jesus saw that he answered thoughtfully and he said to him you are not far from the kingdom of God then no one dared any longer to question him um, it was also, in, in, in by, Jesus said, you know, um, um, well, I don't even know. Lord, the Lord said, uh, you know, uh, I uh, desire obedience, not sacrifice. So, I mean, are we sacrificing? What, and then, you know, I mean, think about it. When, when we're sacrificing, that means something went wrong and we have to repent and we have to give a sacrifice. So, there again, we look at God, you know. Um, we need to look to God always. Um, so, we, we, how does that apply to us, you know? You said, love your neighbor as yourself. To me, if you're loving your neighbor as yourself, then you are loving God. Because God desires for you to love your neighbor. Who is your neighbor? Look next to you. At every, any given moment, look next to you. That is your neighbor. It's not the person down the street. You know, I mean, we go through life, and we would only pay, pay attention to the people around us. You know, um, a lot of cases we don't want to be bothered. <laughs> uh, you know, but in, and in some case, you know, you don't want to go and force yourself on. You know, if the old lady wants. You know, if you need to help, help an old lady across the street. Providing they want to go across the street, that's fine. <laughs> um, but you know, just be attentive. I guess is what I'm trying to say about the people around you. You know, um, when we go to, uh, and then in, um, I want to go to uh, John six six twenty five. I should have had this ready. Uh, all right, in six, actually uh, six twenty-six. Make sure I'm right here. All right. And Jesus said to them, "Truly, truly, I say to you, seek you seek me because you saw signs." But because you ate, not be, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled, do not work for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to eternal life, 
which the Son of Man will give to you. For on him the Father, God, has set his seal. Therefore they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? We always look at what should we do to you know, please God, you know. I mean, obviously we know about the love God and, and the love our neighbor. Um, and a lot of the stuff we've overall heard before, you know, but do we really pay attention to it? Uh, Jesus answered him and said, This is the work of God. And this is the one thing that stands out to me more than anything else, is that you believe in him whom he has sent. Hallelujah. You know, we do all these other works to get noticed by God. But in, in fact, if we believe in Jesus and we trust in Jesus, the other things kind of fall in place. Yeah. You know, um, You know, and uh, I encourage you to read the rest of it, you know, but um, we, we tend to want to um, follow the law, you know, and say, oh, we're not, we look at the law as a reflection of what we're doing, you know, and that, you know, uh, the only law we have to follow is the loving God and love our neighbor. If, if we follow that, then all the, everything else that that was the law will follow. Right. You know, I think uh, you know the, um, what the law is. Is the law is a, a precept or precept is a rule that defines how people should behave. You know. You, uh, if you need to follow the law in order to prove your righteousness, then you'll never do it. Um, so Jesus came to fulfill that law, you know, so we, we don't have to, but we have to trust in him and everything we do. So here's, here's another verse in Deut Deuteronomy 30:15. It says, uh, I see, I have set before you today life and prosperity and death and adversity in the command. I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in His ways and to keep His commandments His, and His statutes and His judgments, that you may live and multiply, that the, that the Lord your God may bless you in the land where you are entering to possess it. Hmm? That was uh, 3015. Well, um... Thing is, you know, when we follow, we follow God, you know, uh, it, 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 things things tend to go go well, okay. But what happens is, you know, we run through life and we we get offended. We get offended real easy, you know. Uh, we we offend ourselves, you know. We God offends us, you know. Um, sometimes, you know, we didn't. And what offenses is, is really is uh, is is an expectation. You know, that, that deviated. Uh, it's your expectation that deviated, uh, deviated uh, in some way. You think something should go one way, and it it, it goes another way, and you, we get offended. Yeah. You know, that's all it is. You know, um, and just remember, an offense builds a fence. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, so, and we don't want fences around. You know, we don't want to have fences between us, God, and then others. 
you know. Um, and, and we're all different people. We're, we're all different. We all, you know, think differently. We, you know, we, you know we, that's what I'm saying about the expectation of others. We, used to, we, we talk about the um, reason that we get offended is that they're not doing like I think they should do. Okay? Uh, I'm not doing the way I should do. You know, whether you be driving on the road as other religions and, um, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that what they done something to you that it's right. But we got to learn to guard against that kind of stuff. You know, uh, I mean, it's always going to be there while we're on this planet. Um, You know, you know, uh, offenses can make you sick. Yes. You know, if you got, if you hold an offense, um, if you, you with harbor that bitterness, you know, that goes along with it. You know, you you, you could actually. I've seen people. I've seen people that complain about everything, and they're sick all the time. Yes. You know, and. Uh, and that I've seen, and I've seen people who are sick that, that don't complain about anything, but we don't know what's in their heart, you know. And I'm not saying it has to be that way, you know. I mean, there's outside offenses. I'll, you know, something can happen to my body, you know, and and start bleeding, you know, or, or you know, uh, and it offends my body, you know, and then now I'm bleeding, you know, or something like that. Um, so, how do we deal with the offenses? Is is where, where I'm coming to. Um, Excuse me, I'm really dry. <laughs> My tongue's sticking to the roof. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> uh, so let's uh, just in um, Galatians uh, five eighteen. If you want to, you know, there it's fine. Uh, It says, if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. It just conforms to it. You know, you have the Spirit of God, you're not uh, under the law. Now, the deeds of the flesh are evident. Immorality, purity, sexual, sexuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, outbursts of anger, um, disputes, dissensions, factions, Envy and drunkenness, carousing, these things of which forewarn you, just as I forewarn you, that ye, those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now, if you look at it, each one of them things, you can see selfishness in there. You know, if you're, if you're doing them things, you, you're doing it because you want to do it and you want your way, or it, it, it's, it's just all you, you know. Um, and then it, it's and then, but then the, you have the fruit, uh, fruit of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Um, against just, uh, such things, there's no law. If you look at each one of them, it's selfless things, because you're giving of yourself. You know, um, uh, even joy, you know, you, when you, you, you know, we, you can look at this and, and say, well, it's all about me, you know, peace, patience, kindness, you know, it's all, it's all about me, how I act. But you really have to love. You can't love somebody if you're not giving of yourself to someone else, you know. You can't, uh, you, you can extend joy to people and help people, encourage them, you know, uh, peace. Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, you know, it's, it's all of giving of self, you know, to others to see that their needs are met, you know, whether it be spiritual, physical, uh, you know. Um,
And it says the crucified of flesh and his passions and passions and desire. When we belong to Christ Jesus, we have, have crucified the flesh with his passions and desire. Okay, well, there's sometimes, you know, within us, you know, we have to determine how we want to respond to this offense, you know. Do we want to respond in the fruit of the Spirit or the fruit of the flesh? In that, that, that's this decision right there. So, and it's not in, in, in these these things that I'm speaking of. You know, they're, they're going even though after you hear this and you study the word, and it's still going to be there. But I'm I want to show you a way overcoming without being constipated to, within yourself. That's right. <laughs> uh, that's so. That's the best way I could put it. There, you know. What I mean, because we, we we try to do things with ourselves, and we look like we're constipated. You know. <laughs> you know. Uh, so there was there was a. Well, I'll get to that. Um, <laughs> says. Uh, uh, We need to, when we feel these desires that, that should not be there or lack of faith or, or something like that, you know, I was riding down the road um, yeah, uh, about a week ago, I was heading to Joseph's house and I was going to go talk to him, but he wasn't there, but I was on the way and, and I, had, I had a problem, you know, I said, it, was, it was a frustrate, you know, some kind of frustration, I can't remember the word and I'll tell you about that. <laughs> that I used. I said, Lord, this this thing, this issue bothers me, Lord. And, and the Holy Spirit told me, that's lack of faith. And I thought about it. I said, yes, it is. My frustration, that frustration was lack of faith. So this is, this is what I do. This is what I did. And I, um, I want to expound on it. Is a, I asked God, and I said, God, yes, I have a problem here. I confess it before you. Take this problem, Father. You know, and I, I, I can't. I, I'll, and that's all I did. You know, I confessed it. You know, ask God's healing. What happened then was I, I got the house. I started talking to Promise because Joe's wasn't there. We talked for a while, and, and I told her about what I just did less than 30 minutes ago, and I couldn't even explain to her what I just did because. It, God took it away. He took the very word away. Yeah. And all I did was confess it. Yeah. You know, I didn't try to say, I'm not going to do this again. You know, and it, which I've done many a times. You know, uh, you, you confess your sins. He's faithful and just to forgive, right? Yeah. And, and that's what he wants us to do. Conf just confess. And he heals us. Yeah. We don't heal ourselves. It says, uh, to elaborate on this a little bit more, in John 21, 15 through 24, it says, Then they finished breakfast. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more, more than these do? He replied, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Now, I know you heard this before, but you're going to hear it again. Um, this is... Jesus is about, about ready to leave, and, uh, and this is what's on his heart. So he said, Jesus told him, feed my lambs. Jesus said a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He replied, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus told him, shepherd my sheep. Jesus said the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter, distressed that Jesus asked him a third time, do you love me? And he said, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I tell you the solemn truth. When you were young, when you were, when you were young, you tied your clothes around you and went wherever you wanted. But when you were old, you will stretch out your hands and others will tie you up 
and bring you where you do not want to go. Now Jesus said this to indicate clearly what kind of death Peter was going to glorify God. And he said this, to, Jesus told Peter, follow me. Uh, sorry, I'm sorry, there was more to it than that I want to elaborate on. Okay, yeah, then um, Peter turning around saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. And the one who also he leaned back on his bosom at the supper, and he said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? So Peter, seeing this, seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, if I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. That Jesus just t told Peter, mind your own business. <laughs> you know, I mean, we always look rubbernecking, you know, what's somebody else doing? Well, if you're looking at somebody else, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. Right. You know? You know, and you know, as a church, we need to uh, pay attention to that kind of thing. You know, um, and you don't know where that other person's at. You know, I mean, you don't know what the Lord has in store for them. And sometimes, you know, it could be a new Christian, it could be uh, an old Christian. But we have to, we have to. Lord showed me this. We have to respect the fact that give them and give them room to grow. We, want, we don't expect our children, our babies, to grow up to be uh, adults in, you know, in a couple of months. It takes time, and they have to learn, you know? Um, and, that's, and that's the same thing with Christians, you know? Whether you've been in it for 40 years or you've just been for four, four days, you know? They need room to grow, okay? And, and you, there's instruction involved, yeah, no doubt. But you have to detect by the Holy Spirit, you know, what you should do about it, you know. If, it's, if something needs to be corrected because it's going to harm somebody, well, then it may be needed to attend to. But maybe they're just d doing stuff um, and out of ignorance and they don't really know. But do you need to tell them or does God need to tell them how to fix it, you know? Um, and. Uh, I really think I really think that's, that's something we we uh, as a church you know we need to just focus with, in ourselves and God and just extend ourselves to others to help others. So maybe maybe they just going through a bad day. John had a bad day, you know, you know maybe uh, you know uh, I should let let the Lord deal with you. Or maybe I should tell you something about it. You know, I I, I, didn't, I didn't see John <laughs> yesterday, so. Um, what else? We, we have what? I think I got ahead of myself, but so we we know. Here's another thing that we need to do. Um, Jesus was in Samaria. Okay, he went to Samaria. And then John 4.31, meanwhile, in, the disciples went off to get food. He, Jesus was talking to the woman at the well. You know the story, you know, in Samaria. You know, and he's, after, he got, he, after he got done, after he got done, the uh, disciples returned with food. You know, and he said, meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. And he said to them, I have food to eat you know nothing about. And the disciples began to say to one another, no one brought him anything to eat, did they? You know, uh, Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to complete his work. 
And that should be our statement too. Is that your food? Or are you just being fed milk, which you just receive it from somebody else? Or you, or you use your food to do the work of God that he's, yes. you know, uh, designated you to do? And we all have different walks. Um, there's no chance I'm going to take pastor's place. You know, a lot, and God did put us together. Amen. You know, God, you know, I mean, uh, it's one of them things you know that you know, you know, and he knew it. Um, I'm going to tell you, um, just, just uh, for instance, backtrack a little bit. He went all the way to church uh, last Saturday, you know. Um, I was kind of wondering, you know, what was going to happen today and Wednesday, you know, just he has any plans, anybody else speaking, and the Lord told me he's going to ask you to, to, to speak. And if he, the Lord wouldn't have told me that when he asked me to speak, I probably wouldn't be here. But um, honestly, uh, and I already knew, and before I even pulled in the driveway, I already knew what the Lord wanted me to talk about was this. You know, I didn't have it all together, but I knew the topic. You know, you know, and and, and putting the. Lord says to be ready in season and out of season, right? And He'll prepare you. Right, you know. So I knew it was God. You know, He wanted me to, to deliver this message, however well it comes out. <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> You know, we we follow, we read the Bible and, and hope to find something, you know, new. But some, you know, I think sometimes, like I did, you know, in a, in that vision that I had, that event, you know, um, I was so caught up in what I was looking at there. I didn't have time to fellowship with the Father, you know. And uh, what I do now is I, I read my Bible, okay. But I also stop and put it down to say, God, do you want to tell me anything? You know, wow. and then, you know, sometimes I want I ask him that first before I read my Bible. You know, I mean, we should all ask him that always. You want to tell me anything? You know, can we just talk? You know, because um, we could read my. You know, I, I think of it as, as I'm reading my Bible here. Oh God, don't bother me. I'm reading about you. <laughs> I mean. I mean, we get that way sometimes. We get so caught up in in, in looking for stuff, we we don't even hear the answer. Mm-hmm. So, in um, let's see, in, Ephes- in Ephesians um, six eighteen. We, sh- we should be praying with all prayer and petition. Pray at all times in the Spirit. With this in view, be on alert with all perseverance and, and pe- petition for all the saints on behalf. Oh, I'm sorry. Of all the saints and pray on my behalf that the utterance may be given to me in opening of my mouth to make known the boldness and the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains that, that proclaiming that I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. You know, um, we need to pray about everything, you know. And it, it's, uh, we need to pray. If, if the Lord's giving you the ability to, speak, to pray in the Spirit, you know, you need to pray in the Spirit. You know, and if you don't pray in the Spirit, you need you need to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit and pray in the Spirit. And, you know, you can be baptized in the Holy Spirit, and I believe, and not be able to pray in the Spirit, you know, right away. But you do you can have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, and it, it not it, it not only edifies you, it charges the air around you and the people around you. You know, it doesn't just it's not it just for you. Um, I know. I know the Bible says it, it says for you in it, but it does say, um, 
pray without um, pray without ceasing. You know, he, Paul said, "I pray more than, than all the alls, but I'd rather give you uh, a few words with understanding than all the uh, uh, you know words and uh, in tongues." Uh, what um. Oh yeah, and, and also, also, not just Paul. That's that's right. And Jude, Jude, Jude one seventeen. But you, beloved, ought to remember these words that were spoken beforehand by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ that they were saying to you in the last time there will be mockers following their own ungodly lusts. These are the ones that cause division, the worldly minded, devoid of spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. And have mercy on some who are doubting. Save others, snatching them out of the fire. And on some, have mercy with fear, hating even the garment polluted by the flesh. heard just said, you know, uh, I, I don't know everything, but, and I don't know what I don't know. Um, and so we think we need, need, need to know everything, but we really don't need to know everything. We uh, just need to know the Son of God, Jesus, Amen. and hold tight to Him. Um, we need to hold, we need to just cling to that. I mean, yeah, let's face it, you know, does anybody know how their TV works? Mm -hmm. how it works. I mean, anybody can tell you, describe how the electronics, he receives a signal and, and it's all processed, but it works, mm -hmm. you know. So such, such is the Word of God. We don't need to know all the details. We just need to know what we know, know right now and um, be able to con confess our sins, you know. And that, and that, it doesn't mean you have to confess your sins to everybody all the time. You know, you're just to God. You and your God. Once you know, once you understand what your problem is, there's, there's a, 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 a conviction there. You know, you confess it to God. You know, and He's faithful and just to forgive. Well, I just want to go to Psalm 91 right now and close with this. If I can find it. Psalms 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you may seek refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and bulk work. You will not need to be afraid of, of the terror by night, 
or the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, or the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may f fall at your side, a ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. You will look on the, with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked, for you have made the Lord my refuge. Even the Most High, your dwelling place, no evil will befall you, nor will any plague come near your tent, for he will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will bear you up in their hands, that you do not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra and the young lion and the serpent and trample down. Because he has loved me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him securely on high because he has known my name. He will call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With a long life, I will satisfy him and let him see my salvation. We trust in God, in God alone, not in ourselves, not in our ability to do right, because we cannot do right. But when we trust God, God is there for us. You know, if we do, if we do it in ourselves, he'll let us fall. You know, just to just show, because God, God is a God of truth. Let's face it, pure truth, pure, pure truth that we probably won't even comprehend ever. You know, and, and whatever He does, he, you know, whatever whatever He uh, He does, it is right. Not that we have to understand it, like I said. Well, that's that's what I have right now. And uh, I, I hope this, you know, in some way helps you, you know, in your walk with the Lord, you know, be it here and beyond, you know. I, I want to, uh, Jason, I want to ask you to come up and share what you shared with me before, you know, because it was encouraging, you know, and it was about repentance. Um, and that's what we all need to do. Um, no, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -oh. Father, I can't just come out and write board Father, like you wanted to. Yes, Lord. Uh, well, just real quick to kind of what just took place. Sorry. And the reason why the reason why I come forth because of the Lord doing it in me also. Um <sighs> Coming out of a dry season that we're in right now, God is bringing us, you know, in a dry season, we're missing something. We're missing, we're missing, we feel like we're missing life, but the life is really there, which is Christ, or God, He's always with us. But we're so dry, we feel empty, and we just, we start gnawing at one another. And that's what takes place, and that's what's going on. So what it is, we're coming back into the light right now, or the lots, the, 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 uh, the springtime, Things are starting to spring up. And God, what does he do? He turns around and starts purging. Okay, I need to start moving upon them because things are starting to get kind of... So what does he do? At the same time, he's bringing correction. It's what it is. I mean, for the last two weeks, the God, God has just been correcting me. You know, um, just real fast. What took place was, two weeks ago, I have a dog. Just simple, just my dog. You know, and I love him. A little pot, a little, a little pug. And I had him, he's on my chest, my dog's dying. Okay. At the same time, I'm having to inject fluids in him to keep him alive. He needs the water. We need the water. We need the word. So what are we missing to stay alive? We're missing the word of God. Because yeah. in the dry season, what do we do? We decide to pull out instead of push closer. Amen. All right? Amen. So listen to this. I set out a squirrel trap. My, my, at work, people were telling me, I got squirrels running in the ceiling. So every other day, I'm checking this trap in the attic at work, at central office, and I'm trying to catch this squirrel. For two months, 
Every other day, other than the weekend, I'm checking the squirrel cage. I'm like, man, I'm getting tired of chasing this squirrel. I stopped checking it. I went inside. I said, uh, Miss Cow, you heard anything about from that squirrel? We ain't heard nothing in two weeks. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> two weeks ago was the last time I checked the squirrel. Guess what? I want to say the squirrel's dead. What does the squirrel have? Had food. No water. Got food. No water. No words. Squirrel, he hydrated and dead. Listen to this. It's not the only thing. Um, I even shared that with I shared that with John at schools with my dog and stuff like that. And it was something that was going on with me. Um, two days ago, I'm breathing and I'm hunched over. I can barely pick my head up. I'm like something's wrong. I leave work. I go home and get in my bed. I'm breathing heavy. Something's wrong. I'm like something's not right. My tongue, if I would move my tongue one way, it would stay in that position. And when I opened my eyes that night, I'm like, I'm dehydrated. I'm dehydrated. I gotta go to the hospital. Well, I waved, my wife said, you want me to take you to the emergency room? I said, no, let me just wake up in the morning and see if I'm okay. I'm trying to put water in, I can't even drink it. The next day, I'm in the hospital, I got an IV. I'm at the clinic for her. And I got an IV in my arm, put fluids in me. Steady, it was another thing. So it's the dog, it's the squirrel. And then it was me. I sat down with my guitar yesterday. Just started practicing for this morning. She turns on ER. Guess what? The first thing I hear, boom, she's dehydrated. Get the IV, we're going to put it in the arm. I'm like, okay, Lord, what are you saying? What he's saying is get back in the Word. Amen. I start sitting down. I said, you know what? I went home from the doctor, and I'm at the table, and I grab my guitar, and I'm like, okay, Lord, you know, and that's like, I felt like I was doing everything on my own. So I put it down. And uh, he says, grab your Bible, just as plain as I'm talking to you. I grab my stuff, I open it up, grab my pencil, grab my paper. And I sit down. I said, okay, Lord, what is it? I'm like, okay. And this is what I got. I brewed a whole bunch, and it wound up being, wound up turning into a sermon. And it says, now repentance is a heart change from the desire to sin to not sin let me say that again now repentance is a heart change a heart change from the desire to sin to the desire to not sin and obey God it is not it is, it is no remorse or guilt because we are caught in sin. That is a worldly sorrow and that only leads to death. Paul wrote, whoops, back up, um, that only leads to death. And said that Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 7, chapter, uh, uh, chapter 7, verse 10, that godly grief or sorrow produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. If we break down the word metatania, which is the Greek word for repentance, it is mete, or mete, how it's pronounced, M-E-T-A, mete, which means to change, like the change that occurs in a metamorphosis, in a neoform, to exercise the mind thinking or comprehend. Is that too much? You understand what I just said? Okay. No matter what, we're going to sin. Paul said it. We're going to sin no matter what we do, but it's a changing of the mind. First the mind into the heart, then the heart back to the mind. And I'm going to break that down for you, how the Lord broke that down for me this morning. It is not turning from sin, because we're going to sin anyway, this is what Paul said, but more changing one's mind and the change is brought only by the Holy Spirit and not by a human origin. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, no matter what you do, no matter um, right. no matter what, we're going to sin. It's going to take place. But now, since we all come into Christ and we all accepted Him, what do we decide to do? Now, it's a mindset thing. But let me show you what took place. 
John chapter 6, 44. Jesus said, No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draws him. Amen. And I will raise him up in the last days. Amen. That's in John chapter 6. Yeah. Now, let me show you what God's done to me this morning. And I got one other thing after I tell you this to back up what you said and the whole thing what you said all this whole time. You may have struggled, but no, anything, but no. It would come out just like God has wanted it to come out. Yeah. And, and it was nothing Him preaching at us. It was Him telling them how He feels and what He's going through because guess what? You, 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 you feel the same way. Yeah. And so do I. That's exactly how I felt. So he, he, he sat there, as humble as can be, and gave you and shared you with heart. Amen. Amen. That's, that's all it was. Amen. So here, John chapter 6, Jesus said, No man comes to me except through the Father which has sent me, draws him, and I will raise him up in the last days. Amen. So that right there. Now watch this. First it has to come from God, then it moves to the Father. So before I can even decide to, to ask Jesus Christ in my life, what does God have to do? Have to draw you, brother. God's got to put it in my mind first. Man, what's going on? Yeah, that does. And before you know it, it begins to move upon your heart. The Spirit of God begins to move upon you. So let me, let me back that up. I'm going to bring you to another way. Let's go, um, let's say, you know, I'm a worldly man. Now, we have, we have, the voice of Satan in our mind, and we got Satan in our heart, and it's only going to produce hatred. Now, one thing should us, as a body, a whole, family, brothers and sisters here, should not have any hatred toward one another. Mm -hmm. But for some reason, we want to get together, and it's like, okay, it's just a little, little nick and here, a little nick and here, a little, but all the time, you know, springtime comes, guess what? We all fine, we all dead, and we all alive. Man, I love you, da, 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 da. everything's good. We're moving as the earth. <laughs> but now watch. Satan in my mind, Satan in my heart produces hatred. So first it starts coming in your mind and sinks into your heart. You start believing what's going on. And you said, you know, um, how did you put it? You said, um, uh, there was something you said that, um, if we, oh, defense and offense. If we start thinking about being, you know, our own defense or our own offense, guess what? We're causing division, we're defensive. That's exactly what he said. So, there it is. Now I'm going to bring it back to God. God, Jesus said in John 6, He, God Himself, brings us unto Jesus Christ. God and Jesus said, Father, I have brought all that you have sent. Right? That's what he said. So, to give that understanding, and God gave me that this morning. All I'm doing is writing, and then he broke it down. And he says, I, I felt in my spirit, he says, think of your mind being the Father. Now, I'm a godly man now. God begins to move in my mind. And then from being in my mind and thinking and dwelling on it, it begins to sink into my heart. That's why God said, take your thoughts captive if the enemy is playing in your mind. So God comes to my mind. I begin to think about what he's, what's going on. It drops into my heart. What produces love it produces Jesus Christ. Because now I'm going to ask Christ into my life. And all of a sudden, here he is. The Holy Spirit begins to sink into you. It's no different than when God hovered over the waters and brought forth land. First, there was water. There was no land yet. There was water in the ferment. But until then, the Spirit of God moved on the waters. Then he raised us up. Right? And that's exactly how it took place in the very beginning. There was no land. There was only water. In the ferment, below and above. The Spirit of God moves upon us and produces godliness. The Lord comes and lives and dwells in us. Now watch. Jesus said, I have brought all that you have given. And then the Lord moves in our mind. That's the fall. Our heart, the Lord Jesus Christ comes and dwells within us. And then all it does is 
it's, it's a desire from not, it's a desire, it goes from a desire to sin to a desire not to sin. Right. So now it goes back to my mind, right? It goes back to my mind and I don't want to do this no more. Right. I want to live for God. Even though the thoughts and everything comes to me, take them captive. Right. Amen. Then I'm a, the Word of God. The Word of God. Any book. The Word of God. Jesus says, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be, just real quick. Wrong book. It's in Marvel. Uh, he says, um, <clears throat> man, I got to read it. I got to, I got to be able to tell you where it's at. <clears throat> I believe I put it in this one. Please, 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 please. It's not in this one either. I wrote it on a piece of paper. Um, so, man, where was I at? What was I looking for? Tell me where I was at, please. Follow. Oh. So we go from a desire of not wanting to sin to a desire, I mean, a desire of sin to not wanting to sin, and it's a heartfelt, it's a mind change. It's something that we must do. So we don't decide by not sinning by, okay, I accepted Christ. It has to line up. If my mind don't connect to my heart and my heart back to my mind, guess what? There's no change. There's no meditating. There's no repentance. So how do we get together and dig and fight at one another and not love? When we're the same, we're supposed to be the same every day. What I was saying was, God, right here. He says it, it, it's John. Moses said, he says this. He says, he tells to the Pharisees. He said, you know, you believe the Moses. I think it was John 5, if I'm not mistaken. You believe the Moses. In what Moses had said. And you don't believe me. And Moses wrote about me. <laughs> so that right there, I'm like, my God. That is so true. So that's why, Pastor, and all of us now, we go to the old covenant to find Jesus Christ. Now what did Jesus do? Jesus said, you know, I only do what I see my Father do. Now God used the old covenant, and He says, I'm going to show you my Son, my Son, my Son, my Son, my Son, and my Son. And Jesus said, I'm going to show you my Father, my Father, my Father, my Father, my Father. They line up. They're one. Just as your mind is about it to God, your heart is about it to Christ. First the mind, the Father, then the Son, and the Son directs you back to the Father, and He keeps us in line. Good. That's good. Throw your Bible, I'm sorry. That's okay. It's about being stay alive. When I got in that word that day, I just began to just flourish and flourish and flourish. And I felt so dry. I spent hours and hours and hours in the word. And then you go a couple months and you're just not there. You know, I'm trying to worship and this and that, and you just feel dead. It's about us selfie. Even if pastor is not here. Right. I love my brother. Yeah. Very mighty in the word. And he said, he don't come here just for a message. He comes here, you know, just to be with one another because we have something to do. Those who go to the end will be saved. One day, you know, it might be someone else in here standing up delivering the same thing. Encouraging. Lifting up. Raising. Yeah. You know, Just to close that real quick, Paul, uh, Carl, baby, what the? Yeah. Check this out. Make friends with the problem. Make friends with the problems in your life through many things, feeling random and wrong, remembering that I am sovereign of everything, 
I can fit everything into a pattern for good, but only to the extent that you trust me. You know, I said in the beginning, I said in the beginning, you know, why did God put this in the order? And I said, only you know, Lord. And I said, the Lord will let us know in the end, right? And well, guess what? It's happening. You know, love song. I'm singing a song to the Father. So I sing a love song unto you. You know, I will trust you, Lord. Here it is. <clears throat> in the silence. God's wanting to be in us and speak out of us. And everything and nothing less. Our life, our sacrifice. Nothing else. Bringing everything unto Him. All I can tell you is that God will let you know in the end. I guess He just did. Because that's what I, I feel now. Every problem can teach you something. Transferring you little by little into the masterpiece that I have created you to be. I mean, that is, that is just so profound. And what I'm reading is... Is um is yeah it, it's just a daily devotional how it just lined up with Brother Carl's message uh, it's it's pretty amazing and what you said in the very beginning of what you were feeling I'm trying okay. the best way to befriend your problem is to thank me for them wow thank you Lord I stubbed my toe mm -hmm. oh man. The simple act opens your mind to the possibility of benefit flowing from your difficulties. You said you had a hard trouble this week. All week, man, I'm so glad to be here. That was your own mouth, the only thing when you walked out when you walked in. You can even give persistent problems nicknames. <laughs> helping you to approach them with uh, familiarity. I don't know that word, Carl. I'm not a <laughs> Uh, familiarity, yeah. Okay, familiarity, okay. Rather than with dread, the next step is to induce them, introduce them to me. Okay, Lord, I had this problem. I want to introduce you to it. Okay, I got it. Now I want you to go on. You know, a guy, uh, a guy I work with, you know, you know what he says? Man, I can feel it already. I'm going to have a bad day. Uh, you know what? <laughs> you know, just one little thing is just destroying your entire day. The next step is introducing them to me, enabling me to embrace them in my loving presence. And I would not necessarily remove your problem. God said, I'm not going to remove your problem. Well, I'm sorry. I, no, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm not, God did not say that. Just saying, just saying out the Bible. Forgive, forgive me for that. I would not necessarily remove your problems, but it is inspired by God. No, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm getting. It's inspired by God for this to come forth right now. I would not necessarily remove your problem by my wi wisdom and uh, significance to bring good out of every one of them and you can you can go you know they got two scriptures down here well just the just of uh, you know what it will be Romans 8 28 and 1st Corinthians uh, 1 23 through 24 so my brother appreciate you I hope that was uh hope I didn't take too long for you I hope that Nope, that's good. Uh.